Stephen O'Neill wanted it, but the referee spotted the foul. It was a jersey ball. The referee absolutely correct on this occasion. But with less than 10 minutes to go, nine points between the teams. Tyrone really need to break down this Dublin defence and raise a green flag rather than a white one. Penrose, I'm pretty sure, will be happy to raise the white. Four points for Martin Penrose. Yeah, he's just tugged there, actually, as he releases the pass to Stephen O'Neill. Maybe just as well he was tugged because the, the ball eventually it didn't reach Stephen O'Neill. Another big day here. Sunday game live, All-Ireland Hurling semi-final. It's Kilkenny against Waterford. Our throw-in begins at 1.15 on RT2. More than welcome to join us. Should be a thriller. Comes down towards Conor Gormley. Brian Dewar. Diagonal run by Philip Jordan. Look at the defending by Dublin. A cul-de-sac of blue jerseys. Dennis Bastick. Down towards Barry Cahill. His work rate continues to impress. Brian Cullen. Captain of Dublin. Back to Bernard Brogan. There's nobody around the goalpost, so he has to go it alone. What about that? Salute Bernard Brogan, Footballer of the Year 2010. You know what? He could well be heading for the same honour again in 2011. Five points for the corner forward. Connor Gormley, Martin Penrose, Aidan Cassidy. Good reading by Paul Flynn. Seemed to pull a hamstring or do some damage as he delivered that ball. It's cramped actually as Jim Connolly goes forward. Gives it back to Alan Brogan. Fronting him is Philip Jordan. Brogan with the left boot. Dublin can do no wrong. It is an exhibition par excellence in an All-Ireland quarter-final. Dublin have found their form. Certainly have found their form. They're doing the basics so well. Their handling is excellent. Their movement is wonderful. Their accuracy has just been up at a level that I haven't seen from a Dublin team in a long, long time. Magnificent football from them. 22 points in an All-Ireland quarter-final. Right on, they've had at least three goal-scoring opportunities. But Tyrone are still around. Enda McGinley, Stephen O'Neill. Lovely little chink, and O'Neill has still got the magic. You'd wonder, perhaps, why he wasn't playing from the start when he has such a role, such an impact, since being introduced by Mickey Hart. I suppose he's been out of football for quite a long time now due to hamstring injury. Maybe Mickey Hart just felt he hadn't got the match practice built up. But he's done very well since he's come in um, at the, early in the second half. Hill 16 coming alive as this match is broadcast indeed around the world. Over in Boston, President of the GA, Christy Cooney, and former President Joe McDonough. Former Leinster chairman Seamus Howland and Gene Duffy from Irma all watching this game as they're attending the CYC Games in Boston. This is an effort sent over by Sean Pavna. Tyrone haven't given up his fourth point of the match. And Tyrone are still alive, if only just. Yeah, you've got to credit Sean Pavna, you've got to credit O'Neill, the way they have kept taking the game to Dublin, even though they're being outclassed in so many aspects of the game. Owen Mulligan. In his own midfield area. Connor Gormley gets by the initial charge. Brian Dewar loading one in. Ender McGinley getting inside the channel, trying. Dublin back there in numbers. Has to turn, has a shot at a very difficult angle, and he scores it. Great score by Ender McGinley. Seven points between the teams. Despite at times Dublin looking awesome, Tyrone have stayed with it. Kevin McMenamin coming on for Dublin, going off is Paul Flynn. McMenamin played well, certainly in the uh, league final. 
against uh, Cork here. Usually registers three or four points in most games. Ger Brennan. Alan Brogan. Gets by Dermot Carlin. Barry Cahill. Into the space, Dermot Cuddle. Chased by Gormley. Gormley wins this particular tussle. Joe McMahon. Past the 45. Over this side, Brian Dewar. Leaves a run on. Fires Martin Swift. Stephen O'Neill. The running off the ball by Mulligan. Good anticipation by Ger Brennan. Read the situation really well. And comes forward. Ross McConnell. Kevin McMenamin. Good anticipation this time by Dermot Carlin. In the past, as we know, Dublin have lost substantial leads. They have it here. Can they hold on to it? Sean Cavanagh. Four Dublin players around him. The support play finally arrives. It's O'Neill. This one slices off the boot. Ball is well wide for Tyrone's only sixth wide of the match. You have a wonderful defending once again by Dublin. Still late in the game, they're managing to get numbers any, any numbers around any Tyrone player with the ball. They've maintained this consistency and this intensity right from the first whistle. So their level of condition is, it, conditioning is excellent. Their team players just have such a high standard. This is going to get, certainly anybody from Donegal will be worrying about this outcome of it eventually, as it looks like ends in a Dublin win. So you're speaking for yourself, Mark <laughs> McCartney. I think so. <laughs> James McCarthy to Barry Cal, Alan Brogan, Keen O'Sullivan. Most coaches will tell you to get by the initial challenge, but on this occasion, I think Keen took a little bit too much out of it. Mark Donnelly picking up an injury there and that uh, tumble for possession. Sean O'Neill. Referee will give the extra few meters to Tyrone. Time ticking away for Tyrone. Two minutes left in the match. A floating one in. Tyrone need goals. Well gathered by Ger Brennan. Fouled as he was coming out. And that is clearly a free for the Leinster champions. Yeah, Brennan has been very steady all day, manning the middle very well. But over, overall, like the incessant pressure applied by Dublin throughout their crisp tactic, their enthusiasm, um, I thought the fresh blood that they introduced throughout the game helped them also. But you know what's important about Joe Brennan as well is his discipline. His discipline has really improved, and for that he should be applauded. Very much so. It's much more, a little bit more wisdom this year than he's had in the last couple of years. But they are a team, Martin, that look to be today on a mission. Eamon Fennell coming on for Dennis Bastic. He was really impressive. He gets the high fives from Owen O'Gara, Michael Darren McCauley, Sean Murray amongst the substitutes there. A job well done for Dublin. Well, wasn't done, it, well done for Dublin. And if you're churlish about things and maybe look for a fault, and you just say, OK, 22 points they scored, the majority from play. But you would love to have seen them embellish that with a goal or two because their approach play definitely deserved a couple of goals throughout the course of the game. Two minutes added time here in Croke Park. Kick out by Cluxton. He's aimed at Kevin Nolan. It's going to be a sideline ball. Yeah, you get the feeling also today is maybe the day the music died from a Tyrone point of view. You know, you hate these guys, have, a lot of them have won three all Irelands and that, but many of them today look very tired, in particular when they were in one-to-one -one situations at the back. You just feel maybe that their best days are past. Pat Gilroy, the journey no doubt continues. Going to introduce another substitute, Billy McMahon is wearing number 30. He's coming on for Kevin McMahon. Thank you, Mark, for Kevin Nolan. <laughs> Billy McMahon for Kevin Nolan. Hill 16 at this stage chanting. They know that they have now booked their place in the All Ireland Football semi final of 2011. Dublin beat Tyrone last year.
with a cracking goal by Ono Gara, but Tyrone always said they had registered 17 wides. There is no doubt it is victory today is unequivocal from a Dublin perspective. Unequivocal and emphatic. There can be no arguments about this one. Tyrone were well and truly outclassed. They were outmaneuvered tactically and in every way they were this, uh, the, the second best team in the field. Joe McMahon. Brought to ground by Kevin McMenamin. McMahon didn't like the challenge and frustrating for him. He really shouldn't be uh, indulging there. As Kevin McMenamin indulged in a little bit of cynical fouling. Joe McMahon floats one in in the hope of getting a lucky break. Gathered by Eamon Fennell, who's just come on for Dennis Bastic. Kevin McMenamin lets the ball go quickly and gathers the return. Billy McMahon will change the direction down towards Bernard Brogan looking around for support Barry Cow Ross McConnell Keen O'Sullivan James McCarthy every pass greeted by Hill 16 cheers Eamon Fennett getting by the Tenacity of Enda McGinley. Fennell, is this going to be the finish off? It hits off the post and comes down to Joe McMahon. And still, Tyrone go forward. 72 minutes, 14 seconds played. End of the journey for Tyrone, and perhaps the end of the road for several of these Tyrone players. Plenty of new talent emerging for Tyrone. But no question whatsoever who the best team really was. Pat Gilroy said earlier, whoever had the hunger, had the appetite, as we said at the very start of the match. Well, that question might have been posed by Pat Gilroy, but the answer came from his team, because Dublin at times were awesome. Mickey Hart, as always, congratulates his opponent on a job well done. For Conor Gormley and Tyrone, heartbreak and disappointment. But for Hill 16, they now know they're heading back to this venue to take on Donegal in a match, indeed, that will re recall 1992 when Dublin and Donegal played in the All-Ireland final. It will now be a repeat of that match in the All-Ireland semi-final. And Dublin will, no doubt, look back on this particular performance as one of the best in many, many years. Hill 16 rejoices. Bernard Brogan scoring impressively all through with five points, Dear McConnelly with six, and here is the full-time score for this All-Ireland Football quarter-final. Dublin, Leinster champions, 22, Tyrone, 15 points. <laughs>